Mike the Ref Maloney, Big Bad Boris on the call here tonight. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Super kick party! Yeah, pay the money for that. No one And of course, you gotta get the coffin skin. Hey, yo, 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 and away we go. Happy Saturday night to one and all here on the Mike DeRev Twitch stream here with our AEW Collision Sidecast. We're from Wales. We're definitely gentlemen and ladies from Wales today. Uh, good to see everybody here. 30th Century Homer, Jay Quick. Good to see you in the chat already tonight. I'm looking forward to this. I don't know a lot about what's on the card tonight. I didn't get to see a graphic today. Uh, but you know, it's going to be, I, I did see Mariah and Tony had that brawl at the, uh, presser, the pre-show presser yesterday or earlier today. Saw the card. I know that they're doing the top flight and Leo rush versus Claudio, uh, Claudio Yuta and pack. I know they're also doing, uh, Jeff Jarrett versus Arya Davari. And I haven't heard, I'll be honest, I haven't heard a whole lot about what else is on here, but going into a pay, a, a pay-per-view, I almost said a PLE, shame on me. Uh, from hearing everything that's going on, like I just, I know it was pre-taped and everything's already going, but. Ah, here we go. Just got released an hour ago, so. So we're going to get Harley Cameron in action against Will Nightingale, so that's a big bonus for us. Statlander and Stokely getting the dupe tonight. Oh, it's going to be fun. Shibata Lethal? Uh, let's just say we're getting uh, a pretty damn good show here. The Conglomeration versus the... Undisputed Kingdom. Let, let's face it. This is, in essence, day one of All In. Like, let's break it down. We essentially have four days of All In, or the All In All Out weekends here. We got, uh, we got tonight. We got tomorrow. We got uh, next or two weeks from Friday. Two weeks from Saturday. Unfortunately, I won't be here for the Friday, but. Wow, we got a lot going on here. And speaking of a lot going on, there's going to be a lot of chaos tomorrow, if you didn't know. Just going to bring it up here before we get going here. Tomorrow, join me for some coffee. I don't even mind if you throw some Baileys in there. Uh, we are going to have a jam-packed crowd here for our All In Sidecast. Uh, it's going to feature not only Kayla J, Zodiac, McG. I heard a couple other guys are planning on popping in here. Uh, Andre C., who uh, was part of the very first sidecast we did. All right, the app actually... The app fucking kicked me out again. God. TSN, I swear. Let me just switch back over to the main screen here. Here we go. This app on my Roku drives me nuts. I got to figure out what's going on with it. So we're going to get a trios match to open and a trios match to close tonight. And Ishii's just sitting back. He's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm taking it easy tonight. Which I don't blame him. He's got to take on Stokely uh, in just over a day here, right? Oh, God, Briscoe, where's a mic? I, I I don't think they're going to give him a mic on this one. Because you also got to remember, there is four hours of wrestling that these fans are going through here, right? Because, like, this was taped on Wednesday after Dynamite. I do feel bad for those guys in England, though. 
They were asking why we can't have, uh, why they couldn't have the show broadcasted earlier. And Tony Khan made a very good point. He had to, uh, the, the people that pay the rights, namely WBD, gets a uh, right of first refusal. And with that, just got to check saying here, folks. Nope. Knew what the problem is now. Wow, Ishii is just the, it is the greatest talker in the world right now. Yeah, we're good. This will be a fun match to start. Like, Ishii looks really happy. Well, Ishii never looks happy. He always sounds bitter. Well, he always looks like he's... Well, he's a stone pit bull, right? It makes sense. Ishii's just like, no, I... I don't care what you say. I am just going to shut up and stay over here for right now. And you got... <laughs> shout out to the British crowd. I always love these guys. They are always so loud, so boisterous. They are a standard, right? He's like, you're not Stokely. Stokely, I'm going to... Yeah. Uh, folks, we have officially gotten our first spot of the night. And we now have officially our second bot of the night. Oh, this is going to be fun. Bots left, bots right, bots center. I got to see if Wisebots got, has a kick caught up yet here, so... can't wait to watch Stokely have a f have to fight Ishii well I, I think it's going to be interesting tonight because I know Stokely and uh, Statland are having a match I think I remember reading about who it was against like Nina Samuels is the uh, is the woman involved in the match hey Zodiac good to see you here tonight Hope you're enjoying your Saturday night. Getting ready for that early... Well, I guess for you, it's not exactly an early, early day. For me, it's literally a coffee morning tomorrow. Because we're starting... Like, tomorrow's stream is going to start here. I'm going to be here at 9.30. Kid Lycos, okay. Got some Labatt for tomorrow. <laughs> Cheers, huh? Yeah, I, I stayed up a little late last night and finished off the uh, overlay. It, it's nothing crazy, so let's not get the expectations through the roof. But I do have a few little perks and tweaks in that to make it look pr professional. Or a combination of the Brady Bunch, one or the other. You guys can judge tomorrow when you see it, but... No, I, according to Ross Sapp, he's really... well. He's uh, definitely put down that there's a lot of good things going on here. A tag team dragon screw leg whip. That's actually pretty cool there. Sorry, it, it's not Labat. It's Labat. Sorry to give the credence to Quebec. That's fine. We always do the same thing at the same time, too. Most of it's made out of Colorado anyway, so whatever. <laughs> Going in over the top. Oh, there we go. No, but I, I, I do have some Caesars that I will probably pop out. 
maybe halfway through the card, but it definitely is a coffee coffee show for us because like like I said, I'm gonna be here. I'm going to be here 9.30 mine time for part of the pre-show. Frankly, my guests, I, I've, I've told all of them, show up whenever you're going to show up. It's an open door policy. And then, uh, yeah, so... Oh, God. This might suck. Reverse, 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 reverse. I could get used to Ishii on commentary. I am with you. Silence is powerful some days. You know that, right? Sometimes not putting your foot in your mouth while you're, while you're trying to talk is sometimes the best thing in the world for you. And, well, a lot of people say that about me too some days, but I digress. It, I, I do love the fact that, you know, just, just having him there, just, it means a lot, right? Put him in brisk on commentary, at least he would even out. Ishii would never have to say a word and, you know. Go for the pin, go for the pin. Be the Aloha Arn. <laughs> He's like, get off of me. Okay, we're done here. I say that Tony and Mariah were... Oh. We're throwing blows? Yeah, like, well, they were going all out. And they've been going all out ever since it started. Well, they're, they're going all in on tomorrow, but... I love how Shivani's calling out uh, Nigel for his uh, interview on Danielson there on Wednesday. If you weren't here, it was a quick run out. And everybody's getting their dives in right now, so. So what do you guys think, like, uh, Getting into all, all the wrestling that's been going on this week, like the one piece to resist Hans that I think of when uh, I'm looking at all the reports today. Just the topper is you have Sean Ross Sapp who uh, decided to bring out his. Uh... Well, that's the end of that theory. That, that ends that theory like that. All right, let's see. So we actually get the picture in picture here this week. Oh, God, this is like all over the place. It is a tape show, so that makes sense. They actually programmed the commercials into the video that got released. But uh, Sean Ross Sapp is even bringing out his... Yeah, Danielson's really injured. He, like, he's going to go away after he, after he's done wrestling here for a while to get fixed up. He wants to come back, but in a, in a backstage capacity, in a, like, I could see the first ever quote-unquote GM slash authority figure of real power, not like Christopher Daniels, being Dan, Dan, uh, Brian Danielson. I almost say Daniel Bryan. I'm like, ugh. That's some bad memories coming out. But yeah, it's... Ter so for most of the guys that are in this matchup right now are involved in that casino, bat casino gauntlet match. I keep calling it casino battle royal, but that's not a battle royal. It's literally a gauntlet match. Be as it may that it's pretty much guaranteed that uh, Ricky Che is going to be uh, part of the match. 
Wonder what they start with tomorrow? We were like we were saying on Wednesday. I think it would shock me if they started with Monet and Baker. For me, I almost think that you just because of the storyline we were talking about, would you happen to start with the gauntlet? Because and Jay Quick, we were talking about this on Wednesday. Theory is Hangman wins the gauntlet and inserts himself in the main event. To me, that makes a lot of sense in terms of you can get Danielson a win without Swerve a loss. You could set up a big match for next week between Swerve and Hangman. Because everybody remember, you they got a pay-per-view in two weeks they got to deal with here. And to me, that is like, wow. A lot to, uh, a lot to put together here, so... I don't mind them talking about a sellout crowd, but it's only 4,500 people, man. Why, why is Orange getting upset because somebody put their hands in their pants? Wonder if we get any announcements tomorrow. All right, chat, I'm going to throw this out here to you guys. Well, you're, what announcements do we get next tomorrow, if we're going to get any? What do you think we're going to get? I know we're going to talk about this a lot more tomorrow, but what do you think we could get? Here? And yeah, I think that's, if you're going to Vegas, I think that's the biggest odds right now. The streaming deal. Any sort of TV deal. Announcements? None? Fair. And the, uh... I think, I think the only thing we really get... If we're, if we're gonna get anything, it will be a TV deal. And that's just because Tony Khan thinks it's a big thing to everybody. To casuals, it don't mean nothing, to be frank. The... I think it's because they have a Roku TV. Somebody in my apartment building has a Roku remote. <laughs> Who's Frank? <laughs> I'll give you that one. Nice little blockbuster off the top. Oh, Kyle screwed that up. Uh oh. Dragon screw on the ropes. It ain't gonna be good. Now we're gonna go with a froggy bow. And everybody was smart to tag as he's as they're on the top rope. I would almost say, why do you even have Orange? Like, why is Orange even out here? He's got a lot of work to do tomorrow. I honestly think we're going to get a big spot for number two in that casino gauntlet match. It's either going to be number two or number three. There, there's a possibility we could get a number of new people in. Seems like when AEW isn't live, our feeds are a lot closer. Well, you also got to remember, too, I've had to reset my feed four times. Andrew Zarian talking about the... Yeah, you know what? I, I will... I'll be blunt with you. If the name ain't Sean Ross Sapp... I think of 95% of the other guys as the possible. Remind me never to piss off Ishii. 
Because he pisses if you get if that guy gets pissed off enough to move. But if if it isn't uh, Sean Ross Sap, I go by the theory of a uh, a broken clock works twice a day. O'Reilly just squeaks out of there. Um, yes, Mr. Ishii, whatever you want. That's exactly it. I want to see what Stokely's... G I would love to see Statlander and Stokely come out next. Just for Ishii to sit there. Either they get the collapse spot here. There it is, a collapse spot. I hope Starkly with dark pants. <laughs> I'm with you. Like, I really... I wonder how this is really going to go. So, so if you're not... If you're not familiar, Stokely has had matches. He has had training. He's done a few matches in Evolve. I don't know if he did any in NXT, actually, but... Still clear as the yellow and brown pants is tribute to the OG Wolverine. <laughs> -na 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 to be to be perfectly honest, yeah, but he's never fought a stone football. Fair enough. I I seen the gear that the that the advertising pick has. He's actually wearing a tribute to Ron Simmons and the chair gave away. The chair bailed on him. How bad does that suck? Hit the climax. Why wouldn't you pin him off the climax? Taven's out. Yeah. Give that landing a two. Yeah, at best. I'd say maybe a three tops. So I wonder if Justin Roberts is going to be here tomorrow. Ishii, wake up. We won. Oh, you get that. That's the response I appreciate. But that London ladder match is going to be insane. Yeah, just a little nod. That's all you need. It's the Bobby Roode approach, right? So yeah, tonight you're going to get a lot more promo packages than usual. You're going to get a ton tonight. You're going to get the ton the next two weeks here because let's face it, they got two dynamites and two collisions to basically piece together another pay-per-view. Once again, everybody, I implore you, if you are uh, an AEW fan and you're going to catch both shows, get it on the Triller app. If you have it hooked up to a Roku TV, just do those. Just do it through there. You'll save yourself a bit of money. I know I saved 30 bucks doing it that way. So, Or just come watch. Well, yes and no. I'm in Edmonton. Nobody can find me. Barely, barely can find me. But... Uh, I do appreciate I hope that you guys come out and check us out because we're going to have a fun sidecast here tomorrow. A lot of coffee, a lot of uh, a lot of beverages flowing as we go along as well. And the best part is it's during the day. Like we're starting 9.30 a.m. Um, that's 8.30 on the West Coast. We're going to be done for East Coast timers. We're going to be done by 5.00. So like Zodiac, I know you usually stream Sunday nights, so you're actually going to be able to if you want to. Just get a bite to eat and uh, and fire up the stream at 9 at nine o'clock, right?
And then we don't have to worry about anything till I think I think World's End. No, no, it's the, up until next year. Oh, it's an all-day streamathon. Yeah, I can just imagine. At least for the uh, at least for the first part of it, you can hang out with us. You can take breaks. And you get to watch wrestling, which, you know, is always a lot of fun, right? So we get Willow versus Harley Cameron here, which I still... Ishii, that's why I wish Ishii would have just stayed out here. Oh, there he is. Never mind, he's staying. It's all fun. Oh, and, uh, yeah, I finally got a streaming schedule figured out for this week coming up. He hugs, well, he hugs his partner. That's when Big Tom comes out, right? As opposed to Little Tom, which, you know, be a little creepy on uh, national TV. Uh-oh. I'll just leave it like that. Showed emotion. He should make Jericho envious with his abilities. The ability to talk, yeah. Apparently, he's got a concert tonight. So, by the way, they need to update her uh, her ex uh, her ex graphic. There, it's no longer Danny XL. She actually went with the Harley Cameron underscore. So, here's an interesting thing I found. Okay, so this is taped the same night as uh, Dynamite, right? Soraya was in the first first show, right? Like, don't get me wrong, she was there for the first show. Harley was out there with her. Now... All of a sudden, uh, this is the second show, and she's nowhere to be found. But she, but uh, Soraya actually managed to make it to an, a Red Pro show tonight. So she still is in England. I just I find it surprising she's not out there for this match, unless she's done. Just enthralled the fact that uh, Harley's just done so much, like, as she's grown and gotten better. Harley kicked out in a hurry. I thought the number one rule would be you always kick out at two. Sort of the Jim Brown effect if you don't. Of course, we're all not that old. But when Jim Brown played uh, for the Cleveland Browns, he made it a point that no matter how he felt after after a hit, after a tackle, after any play that he was involved in, he would always get up exactly at the same moment. And it wouldn't be right away. It would be like he'd stay down Everybody think he might be dead and he gets back up. I don't think if she's gone and the rumors are true that Soraya would be all that great in WWE now a lot has changed. I agree with you that in terms of a in terms of a performer, I don't think she she'd be that great. But here's the other part about it, Zodiac, to me. While at the at the very top level, you have to be that kind of performer. I'm looking at well, I'll I'll, I'll throw a point blank here. They're they're making Jade Cargill look like an amazing star right now, and even Naya like Naya's been okay, but 
Like Nia's got the title, but they've just been making her look look like a diamond here. With WWE, they can put more smoke and mirrors up than you can in AEW. The bar at AEW is a lot higher than it is at WWE. In terms of the caliber of wrestler you need. Don't think Jade looks all that good. But here's the thing. She's got another PLE match next week. You got... Uh, you got... Uh, Bianca and Jade taking on the Unholy Union for the women's tag titles in Berlin next Saturday. So... I'm not saying she looks great in terms of her in-ring action. I'm tell I'm saying that they can, the PR machine of WWE could get anybody over really. They they will force feed somebody until they get them over. Just look at Roman Reigns. It took COVID to get him mixed, but Jade feels like almost 2.0, but more forced. Yeah. I, I I will go with that. Nigel, don't be looking at Ishii. You don't want that problem. Yeah, like... I honestly feel that Nigel's going to get involved in something on uh, tomorrow during the show. Once again, good good performance by Harley, but Willow is the champ. And... She showed exactly why. Right? Nigel's too ripped not to be training for saying, well, some people do like to be in good shape. So yeah, that that's the key thing here. I don't think it has anything to do with the competitors. It's the stipu setting up the stipulation for the all-out match, right? Now, if Willow wins, we could very well get uh, Stokely in a shark cage. If Statlander wins, we could see a few interesting things going on here. For, for me, it only makes sense to have Willow win this to put Stokely in a position where where he could be in something like that. All right, so we got some official hosts. Watch, watch, watch that they're on the phone with Tay Tay right now. Sammy in a suit. I got a feeling we're getting a pre show match set up, maybe with the Dark Order. Okay. So are we getting a 10 man tag? Oh god, this is like a year ahead of time here. Cheesier than heck right now. 
So we get we must be getting like a ten man tag in the middle of the show. This is the uh the cluster F match that we get for a bit of a popcorn break. It almost makes sense that that's what uh, what it's going to be. But if you're issuing an open challenge, why would you? <sighs> yeah, now we get Shibata and Lethal, which is just a win in itself. But I'm just thinking about this. Like, hashtag logic eludes me. I'm looking at this and I'm looking at uh, are they defending the titles? Or are they uh, what, what's going an open Ted man challenge? Yeah, like great. We're going to have five people. You bring out five people. Are we going to do are we going to do Dark Order? And here's one for you. Let me just throw this out for you. If we don't get the 10, if we don't get the announcements of a surpriser, what if it was MVP, Lashley? You could put Ricochet in there. You could put, uh, hell, you could probably even throw Jay Lethal eventually in there. You get Shelton Benjamin in there. You could put, uh, yeah, she yeah, absolutely, Jay Quick. I'm not going to forget Shelton. It it's been a long day. Sometimes the points got to go like this. Basically, the Hurt Syndicate, yeah. If we could get them as the other five-man team, like, let's go. Because I'm sure Dustin would more be more than willing to put Lashley over, to put over uh, Benjamin, put over MVP as they come in. And it all depends where they put them after, right? Like, I really do feel like we need to get a hard sort of a I don't want to say a hard uh, break up there, but set the rosters for a collision and uh, Dynamite and ROH separately. Or this is where you bring Cole Mort. I would go absolutely insane if that was the case. If it was Cole and Wardlow, Cole, Wardlow, and the rest of the Undisputed Kingdom, that would be a lot of fun. I think Cole was streaming today, if I do remember right. And if he's streaming today, there's no way in hell he's going to be out there. Let me just quickly... Chugs... Stream updates. <laughs> Streamed yesterday at noon. Sorry, I'm unfortunately not going to be able to stream today. Was really hoping to get a short but sweet stream in today, but won't be able to. We should be back on stream either Monday or Tuesday. You know, it's all about the boom. And I hope I can damn well get that song added in here. Truth be, truth be known, that all about the boom was supposed to replace uh, the Booker T in my uh, my home run uh, home run call that I had custom made for when we were playing MLB the Show. Which, by the way, I don't know if we're gonna get back to it on stream at all. Just so nice to have Shabbat out here. After everything he's gone through, like for those that aren't familiar, he had a broken neck. He he would. There were questions where he's gonna live, let alone wrestle, right? So we have one half of the AAA Tag Team Champions here in this mat it, at ringside here. And no, it is not Dustin or Sammy. If you didn't hear, the new AAA Tag Team Champions in Mexico, Conan's promotion, Dodge Rezzi, 
When did he break his neck? I think it was like four. It was still while he was in New Japan, right? Like he he got paralyzed in a in a match where I, I think it was a German that took him over. But yeah, just to quickly throw the other way here, Satnam Singh is it was a hematoma. While we're while we're watching here, I'm gonna do a quick check here. Subdural hematoma, yeah, my apologies. Collapse backstage. In 2017, and then he came back in 2021. So, oh god, uh, you know it, it, it's funny because I'm just going over the. Uh, just before I close that up, I clicked through the uh, some of the some of the automatic questions Google gives up. It talked about. The time that, that Meltzer wrote in his uh, newsletter that Shibata actually had his brain removed. Crowd's trying to keep themselves inter interested here in a way. Really surprised Jay Lethal isn't higher up. I think you might start seeing a little bit more of that now because it almost feels like they're doing the split from uh, from Team Jarrett. Yeah, Meltzer had that turn up. Well, like I said, when it comes to uh, when it comes to those guys, if it ain't SRS, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna I'm not gonna believe it completely. So. No, Lethal, a former Ring of Honor champion, former TNA champion. Got one of the coolest gimmicks around. And and to this day, if you if you haven't chat, if you guys seen the promo, basically the uh, Lethal versus Flair promo, I'm most wrestling fans have. If you haven't, let me know in the chat here because we. Uh, Yeah, that's right. He did hold all the titles at the same time. Yeah, Lethal is one of the most accomplished wrestlers around, and it, it just speaks to the depth of this roster right now. Like, there, there's so many levels to how many different talents are on this roster. He should be a lot higher up on the card than what... Uh, the woo off was amazing. Absolutely. Him and Flair and the woo off and the strip off and basically creating a career out of, for himself out of uh, one promo in TNA. Now, if you sit back and think about it, some of the most memorable moments for wrestlers came out of a TNA match. Like, Everybody talks about all the memories out of WWE and AEW and you know New Japan, all the great memories you have. Some of the best lasting memories, they could be great, they could be absolutely kooky, have come out of TNA. Yeah, he beat Flair in a pay-per-view. In many ways, I think Lethal's most memorable moment may be that woo-off against Flair. To a common fan, not to, not the one who studied ROH and kept track, like a casual fan. Like you look at Scott Steiner for all the crazy stuff that he did in wrestling. What does he know most for? A TNA promo where he went off on Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe and Rick and uh, Kurt Angle. Yeah, Steiner math exactly. And I look at, uh, well, Elix Skipper, 
one of the most memorable wrestling moments in history when he ended up doing the tightrope tight rope on the uh, top of the steel cage to go into the Hurricane Rana to the floor. Like, if, if you haven't seen e Elix Skipper's uh, TNA cage match there, do yourself a favor and find it. Jay Quick, have you seen that? Underrated as hell. Yeah, like, well, the thing is, TNA was always, always considered a... Yeah, you have? Okay, well, there you go. And then, uh, like, Kurt Angle, in many ways, he, he established his career in WWE, but he created his legacy in TNA. Because he turned into that wrestling machine that he needed to be when WWE basically said, look, we need you off the drugs. You're not getting off the drugs. We're going to have to let you go. With all the pain relievers and that that he was taking. So AJ created his history. Like for, for me, the most memorable moment for me for AJ in TNA, besides the 2005 uh, match between Christopher Daniel, Samoa Joe and him, which very well could be one of the greatest matches ever. That match essentially made a brand. It turned it around and said, look, we are a legit. We are a legit brand that will grow and we'll get better with our new talent. So yeah, you're looking at so many, like we could talk about Okada's uh, legacy in, uh, in TNA, but I don't think. No, 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 uh -oh. no, please, no. I don't think Okada wants us to hear about it. And I don't need to be called a bitch on my uh, own podcast too, too much or my own sidecast. No, hack the stream and cut my mic. Yeah, probably. That would not surprise me one little bit, to be honest with you. But yeah, I find it really amazing. Oh, God. Why does Lethal go for the elbow and turn into a flying nothing? You know this how Lethal's smart enough to get to like doesn't need any shenanigans. He knows exactly to get to the ropes. He's such a smart wrestler. Like this match I would love to see here years ago, right? And I'm sure it's probably around there. I really do feel that there's a soft split here between J Team Jarrett. So here's a question for you, chat. Jar Jarrett's in a match at Davari. Do we have Hangman come out and beat the crap out of him after? Probably happened when with our OH New Japan tour. Probably. I'd have to really dig in and find that stuff. It once again speaks to the quality of wrestling that's available now, right? I, I said it before. I'll say it again. We are at a time in our lives right now where. Wrestling is so good that it's, if you can't find something you like in wrestling, that's on you. That's not on wrestling. Sorry, finishing up my orange crush from today. That's an old school thing. Oh my God, the claw. So he's using it as a setup now, not a finisher. Then turns into that arm bar and it's done. 
once AEW gets something, they'll actually be able to go back and see some. I got ROH on demand, so I could find a way to get back there. Once again, Jay Quick, I do need to remind everybody there's one key thing that trumps everything. There's this thing called time. Like, I am very blessed with the fact that I get five days off now because of this. Like, I, I, booked off to, I booked off tomorrow on Monday. I have a doctor's appointment on Tuesday, so I said to hell with it. I'll just book the rest of my work week off. This is where I think we're going to slowly get a t get a change here. It's the same thing that happened during the uh the uh, Continental Classic. Like Lethal ended up being just the whipping boy. All right, now we're getting the Osprey uh MJF preview, which I don't think is going to need a whole lot after what had happened? I don't know what's going to be crazier, the match or the entrance. Because I got a feeling MJF's going to have something amazing set up for his entrance. Both? I think which one's going to be worse or better? Uh, I, I love the fact that Danielson's turned around and said, you better use this damn move. Could they start with this match tomorrow? I don't think so. I think you let a lot of steam out of the building if you do that. I think this match might go before the the two final title matches. The, uh, Tony Storm, Mariah May, and the Swerve and Brian Danielson matches. I could honestly see this being like the third. Oh, goody. More commercials. So, oh, the ads are coming up anyway, so this actually works out rather well. I, I don't think you start with something like that. You could What they theoretically could do is start with the trios match. The trio's uh, ladder match. Get all that craziness out of the way early and all that carnage. For for me, that that would that would go for me. But there's so many great ma like yeah, the gauntlet. You can get so much craziness through there. I'm thinking more about the cleanup than anything else, right? The scariest thing and the weirdest thing about AEW is the fact that these matches literally last like the gap between matches is maybe five minutes. Not even. That, that's what a lot of people forget about these pay-per-views with AEW. There's no gap. What matches are there to breathe? Not much. I think they just introduced that 10-man tag so there's a break. Like, hell, outside of the Jericho match, which usually is the one to do that, well, hell, Jericho match will probably be the one to breathe again. What the hell is that? I just threw it out there because, you know, we haven't been able to use it today. But, uh, yeah, Jericho... The Jericho match, to me, just screams popcorn. But as, as I'm looking through this, maybe the 10-man tag, but that's about it. Like, everything else is just such high stakes. And it's such a different philosophy here for AEW, the fact they do that. Yeah, Jericho versus Hook, obviously. I think we're all in agreement that Hook should win. 
Hook might not win. That's the part that worries me the most is when he doesn't win. And then we got to go with some other way with this learning tree crap. And it just upsets me so much the fact that Jericho thinks that he's so good that he doesn't have to retire. Yeah, I know we were talking about that on Wednesday where Taz just comes out and does the choke first. I don't know whether he wants to upstage his son, but it'd be a pretty cool, pretty cool sight to see Taz choke out Jericho just to set that up. Or even if Big Bill's going to come down and attack with a chair, Taz gets in there and chokes out Big Bill. Like to do the save kind of thing. To me, that would be a hell of a choice too, so... Uh, Joe won't be around for a while. Uh, right now they're... Oh, here we go. Ah, the Statlander training of Stokely. I don't know what it is, but Statlander, I just... I, I can't see her being the real evil person. Like, there's just a certain sense of humor in everything she does on top of... Like, this, despite anything she does, she just has that certain level of humor behind it. All right, let's see Stokely. Let's go. We've been dying to see this all night here. As we have the all ray in the ring. And St Stoke is wearing his uh, Nation of Domination gear. Reminds me of a mini version of Ron Simmons at this point. Please don't tell Simmons that personally because I might get, sh you know, damned. Ishii now, yeah. Well, at least the crowd will do it. Briscoe, turn him loose. I don't think they have to turn him anywhere. If he wants to go, he'll go. I'm glad to see that uh, Nina and uh, Statlander sort of, uh, you know, discuss the uh, the color of their outfits. So Nina is a former NXT UK champion. That's a nice spine buster. Well, come on. They're basically the same guy. Kid Lycos 2 and uh, Tomohiro Ishii. They're basically the same guy. Who's, talk who's kidding who here? Yeah, just a tad. It... Stoke gets the win. Well, 
Wait, is this the first true Bix tag? Yes, it will be. AEW does not... I don't think AEW usually does the uh, gender-specific rule. I, I stand corrected. That carnival match when uh, Statlander returned, that was... Uh, it'll be the end of Stokely. But yeah, they actually do real mixed tags. All we need is Ishii to show up, and that'll be the end of this discussion. What? Even, even Statler is like, do you really want to say that? You see, there's a burger of the ring. Sick him. That was like, nope. Yep, pretty much. It's going to be fun to see this matchup, though. And that's why we're going to be here for Zero Hour once again. Cheap plug time. We're going to be here for our All In Sidecast here starting at 9.30 Mountain Time, 11.30 Eastern. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have a ton of fun here. Make sure you stop by. They are lo they're getting a ton of work out of Ben Menkowitz, aren't they? All right. I, I like this. I think that was like Ishii Stokely said that said it not for me. Fair enough. So if you're a casual person and you haven't watched AEW in a while, this actually might get you off the couch and want wanting to watch this. And that's the big thing that AEW's got to work on right now is get promos like this out to people so that they come and watch. They say AEW has no stories. Does Mina interfere? I don't know. Because I think it was a just a couple days ago she was down in Florida with... Uh, with Kyrie Sane. They were hanging out in uh, Florida there, so she might have come up. So they said this is Act 3, so no, normally most... I, I do believe most movies, stories like that go to Act 5. So can you believe that AEW told all out Act 4? Mm. Act 3 is the final? I'm glad you enjoy scripts more than I do, Zodiac. I thought it was always 5 for some reason. Maybe we'll get some uh, spinoffs out of this. Or something like that. All right, we have gone into the official enhancement talent part of the night, I do believe. Who's Hook taking on? Oh, 
that's right. Damn it. I forgot about the, the one match I'm worried about from Wednesday. Man, my brain is absolutely fried here. Hopefully I can book better on the uh, PLE tonight. Granted, PLEs are rather easy there. Hey, Jay Quick, always appreciate you. <sighs> what the hell was that? I I'm just throwing that out there. Just keep Jericho in his highlighter jacket off my... <sighs> See, you can't even get my name right, so it doesn't count, right? Can Jericho stay in Wales? Um, is that a... Uh... Could that be made a bad joke right now? <laughs> what the hell was that? Oh no. <laughs> Jericho. <laughs> nice fallaway suplex there. Like, Bill is so damn good. How is it on him when you were the one who threw the fireball, you dumbass? Ishii, come back! Nah, I think we're done with Ishii tonight. I think he was fed up with being out there already anyway. I think after All Out, Ishii might be done. Like the G1's done, everything's getting back into their fall and getting getting wound up for uh I missed that, Jay Quick. Sorry, I was talking to you here. Oh get the camera off Jericho. I don't want to have to turn my contrast down. Could the catch to be in the gauntlet? Very possibly. I, I, I'd almost think they'd start up with him after, but no reason why he can't be, right? Could you see Takeshi as a winner of the gauntlet getting a championship shot? I could. He actually seems rather credible, too. Fifty-fifty crowd. Which I think fifty-fifty is more than generous for what. Uh, <laughs> Shivani got backwards on that. That was great. So right now we only have one match scheduled for the all in for the uh, zero hour, but I hope Big Bird sues Jericho. I don't think uh, I don't think Sesame Street watches AEW. I think they should. They're more trying to sue Bray Wyatt's estate for uh, the Firefly Funhouse right now. What a boot. Jesus. I thought Jericho was going to stare at the camera for... A minute and a half straight as it's panned at him. Big Bill, you got potential. And you're with that. 
you know what? Like, I think Big Bill's proven that he can pretty much work with anybody. Because look at his last few partners he's had. Like, before this, he had Ricky Starks, which was a phenomenal tag team. And then before that, he had Brian Cage, which was just two monsters. He worked with Enzo, yes, absolutely. And I I will say this. I really appreciate how uh, Eric Arndt, I believe is what he's going by now, has really changed his life and uh, changed things up a lot. So I think a lot more uh, respect needs to go to... uh, to Enzo now from where he was. He knew he was in a bad spot and he made himself, he worked on himself to get himself better. So he was recently up here for a dungeon wrestling show where he got to wrestle the uh, pupil of Bret Hart, Mo Jabari. And apparently it was a very good match. So Hook just getting ripped apart here. I'm surprised there isn't going to be... I I wouldn't be surprised if there was a disqualification here for the mere fact that we're not supposed to worry about a win win on this. This was just literally supposed to be a wear-down match. This t- tonight's just literally flown right by here. And I wonder how much we're going to get for uh I love how I'm looking at the social media thing right now. And they are literally going nuts for Big Bill right now. I think everybody's enjoying it. Oh, that's why I'm... <laughs> All right, I had my phone charging uh, right next to my my RF uh, res- receiver for my uh, headset. So I'm getting static nonstop. I didn't realize all I do is unplug my phone and I'm fine. My God, Bill is over. They all love Bill, and Bill's like, no. Everybody loves Bill. Could this Bill turn and flip the canary? I'll give you that one. He's even got some comedy chops. You gotta love it. Oh, this is hilarious. And then it, it almost makes me wonder what's going to happen when when Hook gets the... (laughs) Like, this is insane! We need to get Big Bill in front. Bill turning on Jericho could be big. Absolutely it could. No, they're not cheering for you, Jericho. Exactly. Well, it's my fault that you're getting over. (laughs) And Bill's like, this is insane. This is nuts. This, I love how Nigel's trying to work this crowd, but it's not happening. Needs a DQ here to protect Bill. Should be arrested for that jacket. Well, 
They have to catch him first, and he just blinds him with the back of it. Throw an audible here. Well, think about it. They also got Jared. They got Jared coming up yet. You want to talk about an insane crowd? This crowd is not going to have it. And you got a Swissman too. <laughs> I I love the effort of Nigel here. I really do. I love the effort of these guys trying to turn this crowd, but I'm sorry, this ain't happening. No, they don't. Thank you. All right, crowd tried to get over a little bit there. Oh. Crowd does not get... I wonder what's going to happen at Webley now. I I'm legit worried for this match being hijacked. This whole crowd does not want Hook to win. Wow. Well, that one kid's a proppy. That is, it's like, this is the same thing that happened at, uh, when, when Big Bill and Brian Cage teamed up here in that, uh, Strange Bell Fellows tournament they had for the uh, AEW tag titles. I was in that crowd, and I think it was Matt Seidel and it was Matt Seidel and another high flyer. But they were supposed to be the faces, and the crowd apps had nothing to do with it. Tony's going to have to look at this seriously now. Is that a we want Bill chant? Yeah. I really hope they realize what they have on their hands here. They've had it for such a long time. Hey. Jay Quick, you got to give him a little bit of credit. Did you see the video of him creating his own title? Like, I watched the uh, casting of his own title, his own championship, after he got rid of the other one and pulled his out. And I really do hope that they do the same thing with every champion that comes out. Like, have that TNT title be the custom title for whoever the champion is, right? Like, for, for anybody that comes out, you get them a sort of their own custom design. Not just the side plates. Make it the title. That way you got to earn that title off of him in, it, in a certain way that makes it sensible for him. And then you get the opportunity to create your own championship. Put your own spin on it. Like, one of the weirder yet cooler times... And yes, I'm bringing this back to WWE a little bit. Would you remember Daniel Bryan when he had his uh, for the world title? Or is the, his version of the WWE title the Earth title for the Earth? 
where it was made of hemp and all the recycled materials. It was actually a pretty cool thing. Darby make it into a skateboard title. I don't know if you want to go that hokey, but maybe make it a coffin, look like a coffin title. I remember when Cena first created the spirit. Yeah. I didn't mind it up until somebody else used it. Like when Edge started going with it. I understand there was a part of it that I just wanted to mock uh, Cena by doing the rated R spinner title. But at the same time, make it your own. Put it with a hole in it so you can be rated R in it. I don't know. There's something. But being able to make that title your own is actually good. I think it'd be a hell of a way to do things, right? Just look at the new Samsung phones and I'm like, wow, that looks cool. But uh, no, I think that coffin match is going to be pretty insane tomorrow. With, with what... Darby can come up with and the fact that he had to get creative because his flamethrower ain't his flamethrower couldn't come over the come over the border once again I, I really appreciate the fact that Nigel dressed up for the night These packages, like, do you remember even a year ago, these packages just weren't the quality that they are now. Taking the pieces from the live shows and interjecting the video in there just to make it absolutely great. I love Danielson in so many ways. Like he can be a little rough to rough around the edges when it like personality wise, but damn, does he know what he's doing in the ring? I love how he's a damn well going to have to wait. Maybe they will kill him. They could have a gun available. Hey, they're doing the coffin match. So who knows what Darby's going to have available for that. So, question for you, chat, real quick. Does Jack Perry bring out an all-glass coffin for Darby? Should he? No. Do I think he does? I think there might be a possibility. Had to check zitters, see how great those pops... Yeah, the pops were... Cr like, I got a chance to see them on on Friday. As long as it's real glass, exactly. When's the last time the Premier Athletes won a Premier match? Oh, oh, that's bitter. So we get a pops. Here comes the king of the mountain. Yeah. You want to see this place explode? Man, could you picture this a year ago? Like last year, everybody was booing Jarrett. Just so he, just because they wanted Grado out there.
for all the craziness that's gone on, you know, I've I've had my disagreements with Jared. Hell, I missed out on Jared's first match because he popped into rehab the night before, or sorry, the night that he was supposed to be in Edmonton was the night after the night where he decided that he had to go home and pop himself into rehab. They're even popping for Karen. Well, Karen's sort of popping for herself here. Jer Karen's going to milk this for all she can. And yeah, it's another joke. Sorry. Sorry. Terrible. 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 No! I'll boo myself on that. But, uh,. Jarrett knows he's nearing the end of the career. He's getting his chance to finally show his human side. And th that's it. Like, he tries to do so much for so many people. When nobody else would take the match with Ric Flair for his final match. Nobody else wanted to do it. Jeff was the guy who stepped up and said he'd do it. It started to change with the, oh, yeah, like when people start to understand the whole story, like, and this is one of the biggest things that WWE would, Lethal was even hesitant. Yeah, like, but when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the Owen, that's a Martha Hart thing. Like, WWE will not talk about Owen Hart no matter what. He's, they should, but they fucked up. I'm straight up. They fucked up. And Jarrett is probably one of the biggest... He was probably one of the guys that was most affected by it. He was the guy that was supposed to go to the ring right after, and he did. Right after his best friend died in the ring. And I don't care what you say. You can be the most professional man in the world. Until you get a chance to talk about that stuff, you are going to, after they wheeled on past him, yeah. But until you get a chance to actually talk about, like, get it out, like, fully talk about, have we ever seen Jeff Jarrett actually get an opportunity to talk about what happened with Owen more than just the uh, tribute show from from the Fed when they had that out there? And yes, I use the Fed when I'm talking about him poorly. And I said, oh, good. Dude. Exactly. He's had the time. He's had the, the and more more often than not, they're actually there celebrating Owen. And the fact that he's had the opportunity now to get his story out for everyone. Even when he owned a promotion, he didn't want to do it because it, it didn't. It wasn't. He didn't get permission from Martha to do it. And Martha didn't want anything to do with wrestling, right? So don't even think he talked about it. He, I, I don't think he wanted to talk about it there because it's also very self-serving if he does. And if you're going to talk about something like that, you talk about it for the right reasons. You don't... You're not doing it to build a pop for yourself and doing it on your own podcast. In many ways, it almost feels like you're doing your own pop for that. But the fact that Martha is now actively involved in AEW... Is ha is assisting AEW. Uh, the Owen Foundation is working with AEW. I think this was the opportunity where Jeff could say, you know what, I even feel... I, I, I feel like this is an opportunity where I can let everybody know exactly what's going on here. And, and the fact that he got to release it and just get to have fun now. And yeah, Zodiac, you're bang on here. Even Carnies have a code.
And Jared is Carney among Carney, right? Davari throw the water bottle at a boy. Then he got to see Martha and her son. I think it brought close. Yeah. Like, just basically getting the chance. Like, you can grieve on your own for many things. Like, when you lose something, you can get the opportunity to actually, you know, you're, you're going to take your time. You're going to try to get through it. But until you get a chance to really deal with the situation, you don't, you're not going to be able to honestly say that you can deal with your grief, right? And I'm sorry that this has turned into a story about grief and loss, but you can see the positiveness that's come out here with J Jarrett. So we've officially gone from half commercial to full commercial at this point. <sighs> But now, good on Jarrett for getting a match over in Wales, right? I, I know a lot of people are trying to push for the uh, Hangman Jarrett match to go at Wembley, but I think for what we have right now, it's actually pretty a pretty solid card overall. And here's the fun part. I don't know if I've seen a full poster yet. Grieve every day for your parents? Yeah, like... Until you're actually able to... Do, Finish it off, right? Jared could be in the gauntlet. Absolutely, he could. But I haven't seen a full card for this show, and it's... I don't want to say it worries me, but it definitely, you know, raises some eyebrows because if they're not going to go their typical 500-match card, could some of these matches get some time to breathe? Tony could have tricks. Yeah, like, I think that 10-man tag at the last minute, nobody's going to think anything of it, right? And that's a, that's a pretty good bait-and-switch move with the fact that you could just let it be, let it go away. Yeah, we're going to have a 10-man tag, and it, it doesn't mean anybody. Next thing you know, you got the entire Hurt Syndicate out there, and the whole place blows up. You son of a... I am so glad that we're going to be on the Triller app tomorrow. I I'm going to have to find some way to pop this onto my computer instead because uh, every hour it seems, or every four... Half hour, hour, whatever it feels like. Could he win with the figure four tonight? That would be pretty cool. Good old school wrestling from Jared here. Atomic drop. Oh, he didn't go for the stroke there. I guess he doesn't have the crowd riled up enough, right? Think if Hater shows up that... Any return, any debut that comes up tonight, that crowd's going to go nuts. That's the thing about AEW crowds versus some other crowds that I see. If there's anybody that's not normal on the card, they will go nuts for them. More often than not, that's what you see, right? Oh, here we go. The leg lariat into... That whole crowd's right into it. Now 
No, nope, once again, going for the figure four ain't gonna work, so it's gonna be a stroke tonight. I would assume that Jarrett's going to win this. There it is. I think that might be one of the first times where he's done that. It That's it and actually won. You're not supposed to show off like that when you're going to pin someone. Get in there, damn, I'll do it. Oh, they're going to show hologram here. Okay. So, get. So, this is the. For those that are new here, this is the Poochie of AEW. Because this is where the studio executives are always asking, if you don't see hologram, you're supposed to be asking, where's hologram? Don't get me wrong, the former Aramis and, uh... Hey, Parrish, how's it going tonight? Watch a lot of great AEW tonight here and uh, do a little WWE 2K24 PLE action after. As we're about to hit a commercial. No, I hope things are going good, Parrish. And yeah, we're just we were just talking about uh, we were just talking about how Jarrett's as over as he is. Big Bill's over as he is. And yeah, as we're hitting our last, I guess this is our last commercial break of the night. So as per tradition, I guess uh, better get everything out while we're doing this here this week. A little bit of a change up here, a little bit extra. A uh, big one, of course, is tomorrow. We're going to have our all-in sidecast here featuring Kayla J, Zodiac, McG. Got a few other surprises lined up here. It is uh, basically a big uh, one-year celebration here of all things AEW. And we got a lot of surprises coming up, so we'll be here for that. Monday, I'm looking to do a daytime stream again of Tears of the Kingdom. I want to go after some big game to tomorrow. If we can get through some big game, we can get some money, we can get some parts, finish our little, uh, get things together. Thursday, August 29, we are finishing that damn game. It's been four months. We are finishing Tears of the Kingdom on Thursday. So join us for that. Tuesday, I'm probably going to bring up the Fight Club if I can. Wednesday, we will be here with AEW Dynamite as well as... The WWE 2K24 GM mode fallout from Fastlane. Which I got a feeling we're going to have a couple four star four rivalry level four matches on that card too. Because hell, we can't fit everything on one show for some reason. Because we're just that good at picking, picking people to fight each other. So, but yeah, if you aren't followed here and you're just, uh, and you're just new here, hit that follow button to know anytime I go live. And once again, appreciate all of you for being here. And appreciate all of you just hanging out and enjoying some wrestling together. Trying to keep things simple, trying to keep things light, trying to keep things fun, which is most important here. But now I'm, I'm going to run a quick ad so we could probably miss the ads for most of the rest of the show. Since they run every 25 minutes and it's 25 minutes too, seems like sort of appropriate that we do this, so. But yeah, also remember, starting this Thursday, we do have uh, September coming. So it's up to 25% off subscriptions, up to 30%, sorry. Starting at 25%, up to 30% uh, off your subscriptions. They do have some bonus deals going on as well. The, uh, I think it's the first week, first week or two weeks, they're doing bit, bit matches, twitches. The big one for me is the last week of September. If somebody donates five gift subs to your, your channel. 
Well, there we go. There's our other match there, right? The Gates of Agony and uh, the Undisputed Kingdom. I guess that makes sense. But yeah, so if uh, if you guys donate uh, five gift subs the last week of September, Twitch will credit you with a sixth one here for us. So not only are they cheaper, but they also get a little bit extra to the streamers. So I'm running through this card. I'm just like every every single one of these matches. I don't know if I can pick a winner. Realistically. Like, we could get four or five different guys in the Casino Gauntlet match. Swerve and Danielson could go either way. Hook and Jericho. I'll be honest. After we saw what happened with Big Bill, I'd almost want to see Big Bill take the title off Jericho. The uh, tag titles, both duels and trios. With trios, you got the four-way. Anyway, you can go any which way with that. Apparently, Jay White's not ready to go. So, uh, I don't think he's going to be here. For the other teams, who knows? We could be all over the place. How am I? I'm doing okay. I'll, I'll be honest, a little bit of tired today. There's a 32-hour shift coming into this, but... Five days off, a lot of wrestling going on, a lot of gaming going on. Life is going good. The ultimate passenger along with top flight. I want to see Top Flight here actually get get the uh, get the like I know they got the pilot's gear on the side, but actually getting the pilot's gear that they could tear off and get for before their matches, that would be a. I, I know it sounds a little kooky, but it would be a lot of fun. Oh, this is going to be a lot of fun. You got one guy that, that's the, the ultimate rig general. You got one that's the ultimate high flyer. And you got, you got the next generation of youthful technical wrestlers. Like, I just love how Claudio's getting the spotlight the way he does. Do we think Ricochet's... I think it's almost a guarantee that Ricochet's there tomorrow, Parrish. Uh, I don't think Sean Ross Sapp would have leaked out that note saying that he's been signed for a multi-year deal if you don't have him in the on here. I think he's either number two or number three in the Casino Gauntlet. This crowd has been going insane here. There's also a possibility that Claudio's like, Pack, you're not Moxley? Mm. <laughs> and I think it's more like, ah, oh, you'll do. Now, I, I think we see that. We might even see a lot more of the Her Hurt Syndicate show up. I, I could totally see Lashley showing up to this. This gauntlet. I do think Hangman's winning it. If I had to put a man down for a pick, maybe Adam Cole, you know. Adam Cole could show up during the buy-in when the Undisputed Kingdom are out there, right? Just to be a nice distraction. 
be a bit of a waste of a debut putting him there, but still, you know, Tony Khan's got so many cards to play that, you know, it doesn't matter. You can just throw one anyway. I don't know how many debuts we're going to get. Oh, show up during MJF? Maybe. So it's either Leo or Action Andretti that will always be a part of this group, right? So... But yeah, that that ladder match is going to be borderline nuts. It also depends on which group is going to be part of it, right? Like if you have the if you have Dante and Darius in there as part of that, like I think Dante was the one that lost his uh, lost his uh like wrecked his knee for a year lost lost his job for a year essentially in the last liner match they had would you have benjamin and mvp yeah I, absolutely benjamin mvp lashley um uh, ricochet actually would i would think would be part of it as well And then literally you could throw anybody else you really want to as part of that group as well. The only thing I'm apprehensive about having him as part of that, you would, uh, maybe about powerhouse. He doesn't really have anything right now. That would be a hell of a addition, but you already got the big guy Lashley, right? You got to look at the dynamic of what you want as part of your team. Ricochet was originally select. Yeah, that that's what we were. Uh, yeah, we were talking about that earlier tonight. That uh, well, Vince is a dickhead. Well, we we've already. I think we've talked about that about four or five times here, in a roundabout way. I I love how top flights like. Why are you not cheering us? Then they look across the ring and see uh, Pac there. Oh, right. There is no way Pac's not in that gauntlet battle royal, is it? Or that gauntlet match. Definitely out of touch here. Vince, a better no, you don't say. <laughs> no. The one thing about AEW more than a... God damn TV. Sorry, don't me don't mind me swearing at this TV of mine. For some reason, it just randomly switches off to my home screen. We're not chilling because there's a Swiss man. Yeah, like oh god. Whoa! Nice little reversal from Leo there. <laughs> Leo teasing the swig. That is so. Oh, 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 oh. When Claudio starts unloading these uh, uppercuts. This is a must see to Cat Swiss. I, I'll give you the rib shot for that. Claudio, I hope you're not trying to call Mox. You don't have a phone. Yeah, he burned his in a fire. And Renee's over in uh, in England right now, so. As once again, we get our half picture in picture, half shot. Rim shot. Hey, you know what? Vic! Everybody's piling in here tonight. Good to see everybody here tonight. That was so cheesy, it was full of holes. Oh, there you go. There's another one for you. But, uh, no, Vic, good to see you tonight. Good to see everybody here tonight. It's been a fun night of collision here. Uh, 
I thought it was the good. Oh, God, here we go. Let's just keep throwing it. Let's just keep throwing the rib shots out today, folks. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's been a good night tonight. We actually got to see Stokely in action. We got to see a former NXT UK champion in action here tonight in Nina Samuels, who uh, teamed up with Kid Lycos 2 to take on uh, Stokely and Statlander. Uh, we got to see Hook and Big... Like, if you guys haven't seen the pop for Big Bill tonight, do yourself a favor, get on the socials, take a look at that Big Bill pop. Like, I, I up until... Up until this match, I am... I was almost certain that Hook had to win it. I almost think Hook doesn't have to now. Because Big Bill could be the guy to beat Jericho for that FTW title. And then Hook could get it back off Big Bill. That wouldn't, you know, eventually. Or we could do six ways rotation. Eventually Hook gets back into it. As a, forgive the whistling outside. Somebody's trying to get in the building because they don't have their own key. Uh, uh, I love people some days. Um, but yeah, watch Bill's watch the pop that Bill got. Uh, you could also uh, you think that wave continues to the states? I think so. We'll find out in a couple weeks. Because in a couple weeks we have another pay per view, right? Like this is the craziest thing about this time of year is the fact that we are literally a week away from another pay-per-view. All right, we're finally back to regular picture here. But yeah, I I, I know that English uh, English crowds are the exception versus the rule. But at the same time, at the same time, this does feel really special. Yes, we did have Ishii on commentary for two matches that did not say a word through the whole thing. Sorry, Jay Quick, I got to remember to bring that out. Just checking side here real quick. I love how Shivani's just trying to pump everything he can into this last 10 minutes to let everybody know what's going on. So I got some new earbuds, and for some reason it keeps beeping at me, so. Nigel looked at him, proceeded to leave his shield. Yeah, like, we had uh, the conglomeration uh, early in between, taking all the Undisputed Kingdom. We had uh, Will and Nightingale and Harley Cameron, which Harley put on a great performance. And yeah, we're ending up with a match that actually has stakes on the show. Uh, last chance spot for the 12-way ladder match. Yeah, and that's the other thing we were to look at. Harley came out by herself, even though this was taped literally maybe an hour and a half after Soraya's match against Tony Storm. And then Soraya shows up at a Rev Pro show today, earlier today or last night, depending which way you're, which time you're looking at this. My God, Leo. Is your contract holding up all plans at AEW? I'm almost thinking that she's one of those that her contract's up. And that was just the last match just to get her a shot, get her a match at home to make her feel good. Tony Khan might actually be, you know considering it an experiment lost and just let her be 
Because realistically, like we've been talking about this repeatedly on the chat here, that Harley Cameron's been getting over more than Soraya has. And Soraya should be used to get Harley over, but it's almost like they're having to use Harley to get Soraya over. Oh, Shivani, Shivani's on his road again. It wasn't a, a Blue Thunder Bomb. It was a Falcon Arrow, but that's okay. Serena never felt like she belonged. That's it. Talk about turning the page. <laughs> and Claudio comes in and everybody's laid out. That's always great. She came in with a fan flare and then it deflated. Yeah, exactly. Like, to me, that's the biggest problem right now, right? Like, she's been there, then she's not there, and, you know, it's all over the place. It's almost a version of a stunner there, not necessarily a jawbreaker. Jawbreaker, you actually go face to face with the guy, duh, right? She had too much ring rust and never shook it up. Well, she never got in the ring enough. And half the time she's spending time trying to defend herself from her boyfriend's idiotic comments. I feel she's too out of touch. It doesn't feel like she's 100%. That's the thing. Like, she doesn't feel like, she doesn't look like that. I'm on the go train to Toronto. I may or may not have been. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. He did the inside out there. That's hilarious. She wrestle and not wrestle for two or three months? Yeah, I get it. And, yeah, I just... That's the biggest problem. Like, when she's not... Senior post of the retro towards disco. Oh, God. I can almost imagine what's going on there. I hope you have a good entertaining Saturday because tomorrow's going to be a lot. Tomorrow's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope to top everything that happens there, right? Oh, God, Leo. Oh, God, Leo. Ends with a drop kick. I would have just. This way, AW should invest in a development PC type building. For... I don't know if that's actually something. Black Arrow, we got her. So we got Pac, Wheeler, and Claudio in the four in the twelve way. I will not maybe have beer in you. Well, you're going to be the only one then. Like, I'm having coffee to start. Don't get me wrong. But by the time we get into it, I got a few Caesars sitting here. That was a hell of a finish. What time does it start tomorrow? Well, the actual card starts at 11. You have Labatt flavored coffee. Let's give you that for that. Oh God, Let, Parrish, I'll throw up the ad here for a second about what's going on tomorrow. Just as we have the Christian coalition out here, AKA the patriarchy. Uh, in regards to Mother Wayne's outfit today. What the hell is that? I feel really bad for the two cougars that died it, for, uh, for that garment. Nigel might like it. Uh, dead, 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 dead. <laughs> I 
Oh, God. No, I think your ex-tag partner is the godfather of ladder matches. You notice that the Go Home Collision is featured the trios title? Like, Dynamite featured the heavyweight title, but this is the one that was featured here. All right, here comes everybody. Is that how you be doing your show? Yeah. Well, I'll throw it up quickly here right now. We're actually going to be starting at 930. We're going to have Kayla J on. Zodiac's going to be here. McGee's going to be on. I know, Vic, you're popping in. Andre C is going to be popping in. We're going to have a little bit of everybody here tonight, tomorrow. So, And here comes the Bang Bang Gang, so I'll have to switch things out. You can pop by after you're done, Parrish. All right, you take care. We'll see you later. Somebody tell Mama Wayne she's not eligible. <laughs> with, with all due respect... Why wouldn't you want to put Mama Wayne through a table, Jay Quick? And here we go. Here we go. Time for the House of Black. Like, can you imagine these 12 in a ring? With the ladders just hanging over the top. That's a big ladder. I love that matching red gear they have here. Do they let Pac, Claudio, and Yuta win? I don't think so. Because there's no real incentive for them to win. Put a gun to my head? I'd say House of Black. If I want to play Tony Khan, I would probably go Bang Bang Gang because they're the most over right now. Do I want to forward the story with... Uh, well, the way you forward the story without the titles for the patriarchy... All right, now they can take care of each other. I'm Claudio. I'm like, why am I getting involved in that fight? Like they were trying to, they were trying to get involved in that fight. I'm like, why are you bothering? I, if if I would have seen six guys fighting around me, I wouldn't even bother. So, I'm not going to be hanging around for the uh, countdown to All In because that, that's a preview show that is probably going to be separate on YouTube. We can check it out later. I'll keep it on the background while I'm waiting here. We're, we're actually going to be switching gears here in about five minutes into uh, WWE 2K24. So, um, tonight, you know, for a go-home show, this isn't exactly the worst thing in the world that we had. Let me put a snooze on there. Claudio's used to Mox jumping into every fight. Yeah, like, he is the oddball here that uh, is used to doing that. But, yeah, I... Tonight set up tomorrow rather well. And the main event ended up being the one match that had stipulations towards what was going to be happening tomorrow. And once again... Boy... We're getting those bots left, right, and center here the last... Well, just tonight for some reason. Maybe it's because we're actually getting popular and we got a crowd in here enjoy the life tonight. But yeah, uh, once again, like, thank you. More than anything, thank you. Uh, just looking at this card, things are going up here. We got the conglomeration set up the uh, Gauntlet, Gauntlet Battle Royal. Because I'm, I'm assuming all five of those guys are going to be in there. You got Ishii out there with uh, Willow. 
You saw that they're actually going to have one of those bots was Stokely. That wouldn't surprise me. Um, you saw that the one of the key things we saw here, and don't underestimate, and Zodiac made a very good point about this. They actually showed that the mixed tag matches are actually mixed tags. They're not like you have to, the men have to face the men, women have to face the women. No, they're mixed tags. Like anybody can wrestle anybody. I think this might be the first time we see that on P on a PLE or PPV ever where it's actually mixed gender like that. Um, on top of that, we got great promo packages on the men's and women's title matches or an ABC. Yeah. Like we got a great match on the TNT title. We got basically every match on the card had a good feeling to it or say hook and bill like that was a complete you know bizarro world match according to what AEW wants but that's the beauty of AEW they got to work with this now because let's see what happens tomorrow does hook get booed and Jericho get cheered like they might have to flip everything on, on its head a little bit here or Jericho's got to work some magic but yeah, like with everything going on, like this is going to be a fun time tomorrow. And I'm just going to flash this up here one more time as we wrap things up. And now everybody's wondering who shows up. Yeah, that too. Let me throw that up there right now that we are uh, going to be having our all-in sidecast tomorrow. I'm going to be here at 930. When everybody else shows up, they show up. I'm good with whatever. Uh, we're going to have a whole, lit, whole plethora of guests that are going to show up here and just celebrate the one year, basically the one year transformation of AEW and how much fun we've been having here on the sidecast. Everybody I've invited in for a previous show has been invited back to tonight. So, or tomorrow, sorry. So that's going to be a ton of fun, but...